Hey everybody, it is Brian Shannon from alphatrends.net and today is Friday the 9th of August 2024. Uh, for the week we had the S&P 500 down 0.01%. Uh, uh, so it was a real low volatility week, right? Well, not really. We'll take a look at these numbers here in a moment. Um, but let's take a look at the chart here. We came down to the year-to-date anchored volume weighted average price. And in hindsight, it looks like, well, it, we should have just bought right there. But if you look at what happened during the week and really see how the activity uh, occurred, Here's what I did as I took this. This is a 15 minute chart. Each one of these candles is 15 minutes. We opened the week and sold off down to zero, down 4.3% at its worst level Monday morning. And uh, from there, we saw a 2.6% bounce and then a 1.7% decline. So it gave back 75% or so of that bounce that it saw in there. It didn't make it easy to be a dip buyer if that's your strategy. And as you know, it's not my strategy you to do that. When we have this type of activity and we're below declining five-day moving average and oversold, I switch to a day trade mode and then look for evidence building that maybe the buyers are going to take control. So we saw, you know, three, four good rallies here this week, 2.6%, 2.9%, 1.5%, and then 3.2% off of Wednesday's low. But you had to endure a 1.7% decline, 1.5% and a 2.5%. It undercut that prior low and looked like it was lights out on on Wednesday for this market, but it did recover. And that's why I consider this type of environment to be a day trade uh, environment. Now, if you held and you, uh, you know, are okay with that volatility, then it was a good week for you. That's your strategy, not mine. My strategy is to control risk as best as possible. Uh, of course, everyone's talking about the fact that the market is rallying on lighter volume, but the fact is the average price adjusted for volume is down here at 523 and a half. So that is more important than the fact that the market rallied on lighter volume relative to the decline. And as we know, vol volume expands in the direction of the trend peaks at the turning points and diminishes on the retracements. That's the way it goes. I'm still not convinced that we're out of the woods yet for this market. When we take a look at the uh, Fibonacci off of the all-time high to this week's low, you can see we're still hanging around that 38.2% level. We have this prior little band of support up here at the 50% level that has the potential to become resistance. And that's also the approximate location of the anchor off of the all-time high. Uh, so we could actually put that on this chart for clarity. So you can see that comes right to that 50% level. And we've got a declining 20-day moving average, which is below the 50-day moving average. So there's still a lot of mixed messages in this market, which to me makes it a shorter-term trade environment, meaning uh, positioning for longer term isn't, you know, for swing trades really, isn't what I'm looking for. The NASDAQ actually finished with a gain this week. So uh, that one, uh, we saw it did uh, gap lower, of course, as well. But uh, this is where we closed on Friday. Let's just put that on there. And you can see we closed above that. So we had a gain. Now the five-day moving average is flattened out. Uh, I'm not a, a aggressive buyer when it does that because of how it made its higher high. It had just run from 435, let's just call it, to 446, 13 points. That's a decent little percentage move. So I'd like to see these markets. And as I pointed out Thursday night, you know, what I want to see happen isn't what the market is necessarily going to do. But I'd like to see it come down, probe the anchor from that low, probe the five-day moving average, maybe a little shakeout, rebuild, and then perhaps it could see a little bit more of a rally, perhaps up to the 50% uh, retracement of the all-time high to this week's low. That would put it at the anchor from the all-time high and the 20-day moving average as well. But, you know, the, I create these scenarios, and on Wednesday I created the scenario where I thought, hey, maybe we we're going to rally up, get trapped below that anchor undercut this low and then a recovery come well that didn't happen today i wanted to see a gap up pull back and then continue 
that didn't happen either. And it's not about trying to predict what the market is going to do. It's to come up with these scenarios so that if they do happen, you're prepared for them. Otherwise, you look at the market and say, you know, how does this fit in from my risk reward perspective overall? And then go from there and say, you know, that's what you're uh, looking for in terms of your time frame, your risk reward. So that 460 area also, we can draw a trend line off of that that looks kind of like this. So, you know, this is if we see continued upside, you know, 460, 463 ish area is a likely level of supply that might become strong enough to offer resistance. It's not resistance. Everyone always talks about, hey, there's resistance here. It's not resistance. We don't know until after the fact. Just like the S&P, we don't know that 4, 540 rather is, going, is resistance. It has prior support tends to act as resistance. A rally up to the anchor from that prior high can act as resistance. It has the potential to. A 50% retracement can be a place where supply is found. When you have all three of those things coming together, that is the retracement, the anchor, and the uh, um, the prior support all in the same spot, well, different groups of people come to the same conclusion in that area. That is, hey, step their foot off the buying power here, maybe take some profits, short sellers become emboldened, and then perhaps we see the decline. That's what's more important is to try to understand the psychology of what goes on at these levels, not to say, hey, there's a resistance there. If it runs up to there and backs off, well, then great. We were anticipating that. We know how to how to participate in that area if it confirms it on a shorter term time frame. That means, you know, maybe short here with a stop above there and look for it to decline down towards that rising five day moving average down towards the anchor from the low this week. That's the way you have to look at it. It's not static. The market is constantly giving us new information in terms of fundamentals and price discovery more important in my mind. The Russell 2000, as we know, failed breakout over here. From that failed move, we saw a fast move lower. It's not even been able to retrace 38.2% of that decline. So it's showing, again, relative weakness for the Russell 2000. I'm personally planning on just staying away from that group. Semiconductors were higher here this week as well. It wasn't an easy trade in this market either. We had big volatility, similar to what I had outlined in the SPY. You know, big gap down, rally, big, uh, you know, little decline here, big rally, big decline, and then another good rally. If we were to pull back down into here, probe that again, and then move higher, that's the scenario I would look for to get a little bit more aggressive on a, on a uh, uh, bounce play. So where are these key levels for this market? Well, we've got the 20-day moving average right here with the anchor off of the all-time high. And you might look at that and say, well, Brian, do you anchor it from the high? Do you anchor it from the low? Or do you an anchor it from the midpoint? You anchor your, uh, your anchor is the open high lows close, uh, close divided by four. So it's the, a it's the actual volume weighted average price of that bar. That's what your start date is. You want to use all of the information, open, high, low, and close. The only accurate, super accurate uh, anchor is off of a tick chart. That's the absolute accurate. We're making a pretty good approximation here with this information, but we don't want just the high. We don't just want the low. We want the average of the psychology of that day, the open, high, low, close divided by four. Anyways, that anchor comes in right with that declining 50 day, excuse me, 20 day moving average. We also have a declining 50 day moving average, which tells me, you know, that we've got to be careful here. When we just look at price action, let's do this. Let's go to a 30 minute time frame and we'll just look at price action action here, um, what, what do we see? We see this high, and then we see a lower high, lower high, lower high, lower lows. So we see lower highs and lower lows. So, you know, we're still have a lot to prove here. Let's put the Fibonacci on here, go from this all-time high down to this low, and a 38.2% retracement brings it to 231, a 50% retracement into that 240, 241 level. So if we see a strong bounce uh, continuation next week, this is a likely area where we have enough supply released because maybe people are selling at the 50% retracement, because maybe some people are selling at that anchor, because maybe some people are selling at the 20-day moving average. But there's enough supply in that area 
to offset the demand. The supply becomes greater than demand, so prices halt. They stop moving higher. We reach that equilibrium. And that is shown on a shorter term time frame, maybe something that looks like this. And then as it breaks below there, then we can say that was distribution because now the short sellers are going to pile in and people's stops are going to get hit. And then perhaps we bounce, you know, we drop down. Maybe then we carve out a higher low. Now that's way too far in advance to really think. What we need to focus on is where has it just come from, from 210 to 225. So nice percentage move doesn't mean it can't continue higher, but the low risk scenario is we come down like this and then we start to bounce. And that is where we want to trade it for the upside. And then if it gets up into that area, look for the next potential meat of the move that we can participate in. And that's what we're trying to do. I'm not trying to pick the low and buy the dip. Some people try to do that. They bought successfully on Monday, but they probably also tried it on this day, this day, and this day. And in particular, you know, trying to buy it on this day, having it go like this, and then undercut that low. And then figuring, oh, I got stopped out, man, I suck, I'm going to buy it back here, and then getting stopped out. To me, it's about what's the lowest risk way to make money in the market. It's not about trying to pick tops and bottoms. The biotechs, I think, are just probably going to need to heal for a while. Big damage done. This is It's going to have to get up to 97 and a half, 98 just to become more neutral. So this area of prior support is likely to become resistance. The average price since that gap up is right in that area as well. What about a retracement in here? If we take that high down to the Monday's low, well, that's it's not an exact number. It's somewhere between 50 and 61%. So it's maybe 57% retracement. I don't follow those numbers to a T. I only look at them and say, hey, we're at a 38.2% retracement. That's often where we see supply. That's a reason to think, hey, maybe we should start paying more close attention in here. That's all I look at those for. Uh, as we know, the financials hit their double top um, uh, retrace, uh, to, uh, projection to the downside, that is, and that happened to coincide with the year-to-date anchor. We've seen a very nice bounce in those. Now, where are they in relation to that bounce and the prior moves? So we look at this and say, well, we had prior support in this area. Support broken tends to act as resistance. Here's a potential level of supply that might be strong enough to offset the demand and supply becomes stronger. Therefore, when prices, if prices move up there and then back away, we can say that was resistance. Let's take a look at uh, the anchor off of this peak. Uh, we're right there. And this peak, we're above it. So mixed messages, my, you know, when, when we have mixed messages on different time frames, it says to me, go slow find another market, or just leave it the heck alone. I'm going to leave it alone. Energy has been a disaster. Uh, it, it's recovering here. Here's our prior band of support in here as well. Here's the anchor off of that high that's right here. So we're looking at this and saying, you know, it's got to get back above 90 and a quarter to become neutral on that uh, daily time frame. But neutral doesn't mean positive. Let's take a real quick look at Bitcoin. Uh, we had uh, pretty good activity in here. And actually, I was telling Alpha Trends members on Wednesday or Thursday, rather, that I thought maybe the market, the equities market could follow through to the upside a little bit. And I wasn't looking to short because of the resilience of Bitcoin told me there was maybe a greater appetite for risk uh, uh, assets. And in here, what we saw was we saw the sell-off. Initially, we bounced to the 38.2% retracement in here. We spoke about that on Wednesday. Let's take a look at that. So from that high right here, that's this near 70,000, down to the low, uh, just under 50, we rallied up to 38.2%. And then we pulled back right to the anchor from the low and then surged from there, right up to the 61.8% retracement. So maybe the worst is over for Bitcoin. I you know, I don't know. I, I just try to look for what the low risk scenarios are. I would prefer, market doesn't care what I want, that maybe we come down like this, start to rebuild a little bit, create a higher low in here, and then maybe it starts to make some uh, recovery move here into the, uh, we're getting close to the fourth quarter this year, um, just a couple weeks uh, away. Uh, well, not that's not really six weeks, eight weeks away. Anyways, that'll do it for now. Maybe we should talk about bonds real quick. Um, 
so that won't do it. By the way, uh, thanks for subscribing and liking the videos. I always forget to mention at the beginning of the video, but uh, bonds are you know came up to uh, close to this prior level of resistance, uh, this little you know area where it found supply and sold off a little bit. This is what you want to see if you want to be a buyer of bonds. Now, I don't buy bonds because, as we mentioned last week, we've got the you know constant gaps in here. They gap almost every single day in the bond market. And in fact, if you're looking at the average that, uh, let's take a look here. So on top we have, this is, let's take a look at the, the average true range, which accounts for all of these gaps in here from the close to the, the high, basically, um, that's the true range, or from the close here to that low, that's the true range. So the average true range is $1.24. The average daily range is just $0.94. Cents. So that means the average range of the bar intraday is $0.94. Cents. The ratio is 76, basically, meaning there is 76% of the activity in the TLT that occurs outside of market hours. To me, that means that this action with all these gaps means it makes it very difficult to control risk, that you're stuck with, with the in inability to, to manage basically 25% of your risk in the bonds. So that's part of the reason I don't trade those. Um, but maybe we can do this, see that flatten out. I would say if you're looking to get involved in bonds, Next week is a good time to start paying a little bit more attention to these. Have a good weekend.